Reef. I'm your new chair. I'm from the Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisheries. Um, you may recall that David Pierce was the vice chair, and I was approved as vice chair in October, which sent me on a meteoric rise to be chair <laughs> immediately today. So uh, please bear with me. This is my first meeting chairing. If I'm doing anything inappropriate or incorrect, I'm sure Kirby will tell me, but if there's any questions also, please let me know. So let's just jump right in. Um, I don't think we have any announcements for this group today. Nope. So uh, can we have board consent on approval of the agenda? No comments. Okay. Agenda is approved. Uh, board consent on approval of proceedings. The proceedings from the October 2019 meeting. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes? Okay. Seeing none, the proceedings are approved. No one has signed up for public comment on any items outside of the agenda, so we're going to move right into our draft addendum three. Kirby is going to provide a presentation for us, but before we get going, I just want to remind the board of what the motion that this board made in October was. That was move to initiate an addendum to expand the quota period options in amendment three by adding options which address challenges experienced in low quota scenarios frequent starting and stopping of fishing days, small months of quota left at the end of the year. The addendum should include, but does not have to be limited to, an option which allocates 100% of the Area 1A quota to the months of June through December. The addendum should also consider expanding the small mesh bottom trawl fleet days out provisions to all Category C and D permits. So that's what we did in October, and now we're going to consider the options that the PDT has put together, and I'll hand it to Kirby. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I've got a presentation for you all to go through draft addendum three up on the screen now I should have an outline I'm going to go through the timeline in terms of the development of this document purpose uh, give you an overview and then get into the actual management issues and options and talk about implementation and take any questions you guys may have so uh, this board uh, initiated draft addendum three last October the PDT worked on it from December through January and today, uh, the board will review this document and consider whether to approve it for public comment. After today, on the screen, I have a tentative timeline of how things could play out. Public comment could start next month and go through April. We need 30 days for these addenda, uh, but it could be longer if you guys uh, feel that that's necessary. Uh, for considering final approval of the addendum, the board will meet at the spring ASMFC meeting. Uh, hear public comment and take final action. We are thinking at this point that we would hold the days out meeting uh, to set days out measures during that same meeting week following this board's uh, meeting and it would probably be by conference call. All right, so in terms of the purpose of this document, uh, Kate uh, reminded this board of the motion that was passed in October and in terms of the, the statement of the problem really, uh, as you all are aware, in 2019, the sub-ACL was significantly reduced in light of the lower recruitment and estimated population size uh, indicated in the 2018 benchmark stock assessment. In response, the board chose a bi-monthly quota allocation in combination with days out measures to better manage the uh, fishing effort under this extremely low quota. However, the chosen combination of effort controls and quota allocation in 2019 resulted in short and infrequent windows of harvesting opportunity. Additionally, while the bi-monthly quota allocation extended the fishing season, uh, the allo allocation left very little quota available towards the end of the fishing year, uh, making fishing trips less economical. So accessing herring later in the season in Area 1A uh, became challenging as there were numerous spawn enclosures that inhibited access during the late summer and fall and catch rates um, have been dropping off in recent years as fish migrate further offshore uh, during this time. So the sub-ACL for 2020 and beyond will be uh, lower uh, and the sub-ACL will, will likely stay at, at low levels until we see an increase in recruitment. And to avoid continual closures and manage landings more efficiently under these low quota scenarios, new allocations and management tools are needed. Um, so that's really the purpose of what this document is uh, set out to try to address. So just as uh, some background, uh, as this board is very much well aware, uh, the current management tools available for managing the uh, herring fishery in Area 1A 
primarily consist of quota allocation and effort controls. Um, these have been in place since 1999. Uh, the days out measures establish fixed days out of the fishery to manage the rate of harvest. The term day out was in reference to days when a vessel could not land uh, or fish for herring. The current quota allocations are outlined in Amendment 3 and the current days out measures are in Addendum 1. In terms of effort controls, um, the majority of vessels that fish and land Atlantic herring in uh, this area are federally permitted because the fishery takes place in both state and federal waters. And in turn, uh, the, the permit categories that are primarily looked at in terms of um, applying effort controls are limited access permits for all management areas, which is category A, limited access incidental catch permits for two, uh, 25 metric tons per trip, category C, um, and an open access incidental catch permit for three metric tons per trip, category D. Under Addendum 1, different landing restrictions can be placed on those permit um, holders depending on the permit category. Uh, annually, what this board uh, sets out are harvest specifications, and it begins with the annual meeting where the board decides how to allocate that sub-ACL for the upcoming fishing season. Uh, tables 1 and 2 in the document, you can find them on page 5, outline the seasonal, trimester, and bi-monthly quota allocations that are available to the board to choose from. Uh, for much of the last decade, the board split the Area 1A sub-ACL into trimesters. And during this time, the majority, about 72% of the Area 1A sub-ACL has been allocated during the months of June through September, which is trimester two. Uh, these months overlap with the peak season for lobster landings when herring is the widely used source of bait. Um, once the allocation has been set, the states of Maine, New Hampshire, uh, and Massachusetts set the days out measures prior to the beginning of the fishing season. Uh, the following restrictions can be applied by permit category. Category A permits are subject to landing days, weekly landing limits, and requirements specific to classifying carrier vessels. All three of these provisions can be applied from June 1 through September 30th and only during September, or October 1 through December 31st can landing days be specified. For category C and D permits, there are landing uh, day restrictions that can be applied from June 1 through September 30th through the small mesh bottom trawl uh, program. I think it's important to understand that with these uh, quota allocations and effort controls, these were largely developed under a situation where we had a much higher sub-ACL than uh, this board is currently uh, considering in terms of managing herring uh, in 2019 and, and in the coming years. Uh, to further highlight how things are different uh, starting in 2019, in 2017 and 18 landing days and weekly landing limits increased throughout the trimester to maximize harvest opportunities. Um, with the fishery open from June 1 through September 30th with no closures. These management changes were made in response to the landings being much lower than the quota period allocation during the beginning of the fishing season. In 2019, the fishery did not begin until July 15th. Uh, the, the states moved to set zero landing days from August, 3rd, or August 18th through September 1st and landing restrictions were maintained throughout the allocation period to restrict fishing effort under the low quota. So this figure really demonstrates how radically different landings were in 2019 uh, relative to some of the recent years. Uh, as I was talking about before in terms of permits, they're uh, important for managing herring in Area 1A. Uh, limited entry was implemented through Amendment 1 to the federal herring FMP um, and as mentioned, uh, A, category A, C, and D make up the majority of landings in Area 1A. Additionally, there are categories C, uh, B and E. Not all vessels with herring permits are active in the herring fishery, though. For example, there were between 50 and 60 vessels with a category A permit from 2014 through 2018, but only 50 to 60 percent of those were active. And when we're saying active, they landed at least one pound of herring. Although there's been far fewer uh, active limited access versus open access vessels in recent years, the limited access vessels category uh, A, B, and C 
account for over 98% of annual herring landings uh, during that, that time period. When thinking about the quota allocation and effort controls in terms of uh, managing herring and allowing enough bait to get to the uh, lobster uh, fishery, uh, the PDT felt that it was important to consider the Menhaden fishery. And recent uh, quota reductions for herring have increased the importance of uh, Menhaden uh, as a bait source. Uh, concurrently, harvest of Menhaden in the Gulf of uh, Maine has increased, and this increase has helped supplement the shortage, shortage left by the reduced herring quota during the summer months. Uh, since 2017, Menhaden landings in the Gulf of Maine uh, primarily occur in summer months, so June, July, and August, with the majority of those landings occurring in July, specifically the third week of July. Um, this chart here shows you how over the last three years, uh, even in spite of the lower quota, they have generally tracked with that uh, time period in which landings greatly increase for Menhaden. If the Gulf of Maine Menhaden fishery continues to be productive, uh, maintaining an offset for the herring fishery might help mitigate the shortage in the available uh, lobster bait while providing um, increased fishing opportunity for vessels that are targeting both species. So that concludes the background I was going to provide. I'm going to move into the management issues and the options next. So the first uh, issue section is the quota allocation. So option one, status quo. This is pretty self-explanatory. There's no changes if this option were, be, were to be selected. Um, the board would still be able to choose from the allocations that are available in tables one and two uh, that are listed in the document annually. Option two um, in this section outlines an alternate seasonal allocation. So under this option, if the board moves to allocate 0% of the annual sub-ACL prior to June 1, the board can choose to allocate 100% of the Area 1A sub-ACL from June 1 through um, December 31st. This option is intended to give managers the ability to allocate all of the quota at once. So it's important to note that under this allocation, in low quota years, certain gear types may not have access to the resource later on in the fishing season. For example, midwater trawl vessels are prohibited from fishing prior to October 1, and depending on the days out measures implemented, these vessels may not have access to the resource if the quota is caught before October 1st. Uh, the next option in this section is uh, option three, which proposes an alternate trimester allocation. This option puts forward an alternate time frame for the trimester management that considers the need for access by various gear types throughout the year. Under this option, harvest of herring can be concentrated during the peak availability of the resource during the fishing season, matching well with the bait demand prior to the onset of the spawn enclosures. Unused quota under this option would be rolled into the subsequent trimester in the same year. So as you can see on the screen, during that period of June 1 through August 31st, 80% of the quota would be allocated then, 20% would be allocated between September 1st through December 31st. It's also important to note uh, in this section that if the board approves this document, it goes out for public comment, and we come back in May, the board can choose to approve both options two and three to be included in, and considered moving forward as uh, options in the suite of available choices annually to choose from. So that concludes that section. I'm moving on to 3.2, the days out permit provisions. So there are just two options in this section. Option one, status quo. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. Only Category A permits would be uh, subject to the landing days and weekly landing limits. That's currently in place. And again, that, that, those restrictions can be applied from June 1 through September 30th. Option 2 uh, puts forward that the days out uh, measures that apply to Category A permits could also apply to uh, Category C permits. So all vessels with a Category C permit would be subject to those same measures, which are landing days and weekly landing limits. Um, 
And this option is intended to implement uh, the same measures for both permit categories, which would account for 99.9% .9 of vessels responsible for herring landings in recent years. If approved by the board, um, the states of Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts would be able to specify the same landing restrictions uh, during the days out specification process later on uh, this year in May. So the last section I'm going to go through today is the weekly landing limit. So there are three options here. Option one, status quo, means that the weekly landing limits for category A would remain in place um, and they would uh, still only apply from June 1 through September 30th. Option two is similar to status quo, but the difference here is that there would no longer be a requirement to declare into the fishery. So currently the way we are accounting for fishing effort and trying to project out annually how many boats are going to be in the fishery, uh, those vessels with these category uh, permits are supposed to uh, notify the states beforehand. Uh, and it's a, this option is intended to eliminate what has been uh, deemed a, an administrative process that hasn't aided in developing estimates of fishing effort in the coming year. Next, option three, under this option, uh, weekly landing limits would apply for all vessels throughout all uh, quota periods. So the weekly landing limits may be specified through the entirety of all quota allocation periods, that is bi-monthly, trimester, and seasonal. Vessels landing in Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts are subject to the same weekly landing limit under this option regardless of port state. And similar to option two, this option is intended to implement the same days out measures for 99.9% .9 of vessels responsible for herring landings in recent year. Also similar to option two, uh, it would do away with the notification requirement with the exception of those requirements that are outlined under the small mesh bottom trawl uh, program. So that concludes the options that are in this document. In terms of implementation, as I mentioned before, after the public comment period, if the board approves this document in May, the options would be available for implementing this fishing season in 2020. The days out meeting would be held by conference call, likely during that spring meeting. And because the board already voted on the allocation at the annual meeting, uh, that can be changed. It would just need a two thirds majority uh, because that was final action. So with that, I'll take any questions. Thank you. Thanks, Kirby. Any questions from the board? Yeah, Megan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Kirby, I had a question. I think it's section 3.2, option two, um, about the days out for category A and C vessels. I just wanted to confirm that the category C small mesh bottom trawl are under the small mesh bottom trawl days out. It was, I think that's in what's written as the regulatory language, but I don't see that in the description of the option. So I'm just trying to confirm that. One more time, section 3.2, option two you're asking about? Yeah, I'm asking how does this interact with the small mesh bottom trawl days out? So if you're a category C with a small mesh bottom trawl, you're under the small mesh bottom trawl days out. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay, maybe um, it might just be helpful to add that in option two, the language describing it, because um, it says right now all vessels with a category C permit, so I could see that causing some confusion. Um, that might just help. Um, and then if it's okay, I also had a comment on the background section. Um, for section 2.2.3, it talks about the Menhaden and herring fishery kind of uh, in concurrence. Um, and there's kind of a suggestion that maybe the two fisheries should not overlap or there will be minimal overlap. And I just want to caution how far we take that conjecture because the gain in Menhaden is not equal to the loss of herring. Um, the loss of herring is much higher. So I think it might be helpful to say that in the document or just kind of uh, have caution with that conjecture. Thank you, Megan. Um, 
So based on that feedback for the background section, maybe it might be helpful if offline you can work with me to make sure we get that language uh, perfected. Thanks. Any other questions on Kirby's presentation or the options that are in the document? Just questions for now? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to ask uh, Terry Stockwell, who is our appointed representative from the New England Fishery Management Council, to provide some of the input that that council had from their meeting last week. Terry? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I have some general comments on the draft addendum. Um, and I certainly understand the Commission's interest to add some new measures to the toolbox in order to enable more efficient use of the, of the herring resource under the current low quotas. As a past section now uh, board member, I well remember the many meetings we had trying to balance out the, the uh, best of way to harvest the available quota with the needs of both the fishing industry and the bait market demand. However, the council is adamantly opposed to any new tools that exclude some segments of the fishery from the resource and do not allow for fair and equitable access by gear type. Uh, specifically, the proposed measures in 3.1 are inconsistent with the federal FMP and the standards that the council is required to follow. The council further comments that uh, reallocation should not be a purpose or result of this action and notes that the resource in Area 1A has been allocated and or divided by seasons for many years. The proposed options change that, uh, that allocation decision by potentially taking fish from one sector and awarding it to another. Uh, in anticipation that this draft addendum will be approved for public comment, the council requests that a public hearing be scheduled concurrent with a scheduled council or herring committee meeting. Uh, Deirdre Bulky, uh, the council's herring FMP lead, is standing by to work with you, Kirby, to hopefully make that happen. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. So with that, we can open it to board discussion. If there are motions on any of the specific options in the document to remove, tweak, change, add anything, we can do that at this point. We could also take the entire addendum as a whole and vote to either approve or disapprove going out to public comment. Richie? Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I'd move to uh, uh, vote in favor of sending this to the public, the entire document. Is there a second? Steve Train. Any discussion or comment on the motion? Just, Just take a minute while the motion is being put up. Richie? Uh, thank you. Just to clarify um, the edits that were uh, discussed about the document, I would assume those would be included, that those, it is assumed those are included in my motion. Thank you. Any further discussion on the motion? Are there any objections to the motion? Terry. So we can vote on the motion. All in favor? Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that motion carries, so <clears throat> 810. And from there, we'll ask some questions about uh, moving forward with this addendum in terms of public comment meetings and timeline, as Kirby had outlined. Richie? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I would just uh, like to comment on uh, Terry's and, and the Council's proposal. Um, <clears throat> um, I think our public input process is uh, thorough and extensive um, <clears throat> and we certainly don't uh, exclude anyone or any entity <clears throat> um, and I think the council 
uh, also provides us input uh, through Terry uh, at this table, uh, as well as uh, my representation of the Commission uh, on the uh, advisory panel. Um, so I guess I don't see the need for uh, a separate uh, public forum with the council where they, the council's more than welcome to attend the uh, various uh, public meetings that we have. So I guess that would be my take. Thank you. Thanks, Richie. So I'm going to ask um, if what states want to hold public meetings on this addendum, and of those states that want to hold meetings, if you require assistance from ASMFC staff, you don't have to answer today. You can think about it a little bit, but that's a question that Kirby will need to know and Tony will need to know in terms of scheduling. So do any of the states know now that they want to hold a public meeting on this? Maine. Okay, that's good for now. Um, the comment period will be a default of 30 days unless we want to extend it for longer, up to 60 or 90 days. Eric? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I, I respectfully disagree with Richie White. The New England Council is a is a you know an active management partner with us in this, and if they are requesting a a meeting in conjunction with one of their committee meetings, uh, I, I think the April Council meeting is in Mystic, Connecticut. That may not be the best place to have a a public hearing, but I, I, th I think we should grant our management partner their request. So that's my position. Thanks, Eric. So as I understood Terry's comments, there it is a formal request from the council to the commission about potentially coordinating a public meeting. Is that correct, Terry? That is correct. Does that help answer your question, Eric, in terms of that it's a formal request? Okay. Um, Madam Chair, is it okay if I ask Terry a question through you? Terry, is there, are there any committee meetings, uh, Harry com Herring committee meetings scheduled for uh, the New England Council prior to the um, April Council meeting? Stand by a minute, Bob, I'll look it up for you. Yes, there's yeah, a heard? Herring advisory panel and committee meeting on March 3rd. So no further comments on the addendum. We'll move forward. Uh, we're going to talk about Ray. Yeah, so uh, taking this up at the AP committee meeting on March 3rd, what's the timeline? Are we going to be able to get this out for this coming fishing season? Yeah, th thanks, Madam Chair. So as I mentioned uh, before, if the board approves this at the May meeting, it would be for an implementation immediately. So the board could use these options for the 2020 fishing season. Thank you. Okay, so we're moving on to um, take action on setting the sub-annual catch limit specifications for the 2020 fishing year. Um, I think Kirby's going to give us some background information on this, and then we'll have a motion on uh, whether or not to approve these sub-ACL specifications. Thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, I've got just a brief presentation. The first slide should look pretty familiar to you guys. I presented this back in um, October. So the council approved framework six in June. It contains 2019 through 2021 specifications and a new overfishing definition consistent with the 2018 benchmark stock assessment. Uh, last week, NOAA released the proposed rule that um, is out for public comment now and it contains those new specifications. Uh, just a reminder, the proposed rule includes a lower catch limit for the Area 1A sub-ACL for 2020 and 2021, uh, 3,344 metric tons, and that's based on the control rule proposed in Amendment 8. So in terms of how this plays out for 2020, it's, it's about a 23% decrease in the sub-ACL from 2019. So up on the screen, I've got here the uh, 2020 and 2021 specifications. As you can see, there's two different overfishing limits in 2020 and 2021. After that, though, the ABC down is consistent for both years. Uh, the ABC is set, that's the acceptable biological catch, at 
16,131 metric tons. The ACL, uh, with the management uncertainty uh, buffer uh, removed, is 11,571 metric tons. And then specific for Area 1A, the sub-ACL is 28.9 percent of that at 3,344 metric tons. Um, it's important to note some of the other things in terms of the fixed gear set aside set at 30 metric tons, and the research set aside is uh, up to 3 percent of each sub-ACL. So today for the board's consideration is uh, to approve the 2020-2021 specifications as recommended by the council and outlined in the proposed rule by NOAA Fisheries. So I'll take any questions. Thank you. Thanks, Kirby. Any questions for Kirby on his presentation? Okay, we would be looking for a motion. Megan Ware. Um, I will make the motion. I think staff has this move to approve the following Atlantic hearing specifications for 2020 as recommended by the New England Fishery Management Council, contingent on the final rule being published by NOAA Fisheries. Um, <clears throat> The ACL 11,571 metric tons, domestic annual harvest 11,571 metric tons, border transfer 100 metric tons, uh, area 1A sub ACL 3,344 metric tons, area 1B sub ACL 498 metric tons, area 2 sub ACL 3,217 metric tons, area 3 sub ACL 4,513 metric tons, and fix gear set aside 30 metric tons. Thank you, Megan. Seconded by Ray Kane. Any discussion on the motion? Any objections to the motion? Okay, that. Richie, question? Um, was the intent of this 20 and 21 or just 20? Maker of the motion, Megan. I'm just making the motion for 2020. Uh, there's a stock assessment ongoing right now for herring, and the council will be looking at 2021 specs um, this fall. So at this point, I was just approving 2020. Any other questions or discussion? Any objections? Any public comment on this motion? Okay, with no objection, that motion passes by consensus. Okay, on to our final agenda item. Uh, we will need to elect a vice chair of this board. Uh, be looking for any motion to nominate a member to be vice chair, Richie White. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, it's my great honor to pleasure. recommend and pleasure. Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> to recommend uh, Sheree Patterson. Thank you, Richie. A nomination for Sheree Patterson as the vice chair, seconded by Ray Kane. Any questions or discussion on this motion? Any objections? Great, this motion passes by consensus. Congratulations, Sheree. Is there any other business for the Atlantic Herring Board today? Well, with that, I will thank you very much for being patient with my first time, and I would take a motion to adjourn. Sherry, and we are adjourned. <laughs> thank you.